we bloody love Spider-Man. He's funny, he's brave, and when New Yorkers are in trouble, he shows up to help almost all of the time. We say almost because, as Spidey's latest outing on PS4 proves, old Webhead isn't always deploying his certified amazing spider powers to the most heroic ends. In fact, some of the things Peter Parker's masked alter ego gets up to are less the stuff of superheroes and more downright weird. Hey, uh, Spider-Man? Thugs in demon masks are terrorising the city. Why are you spraying armpit gas onto fish right now? Come on, fishy fishies. Here are some of the least heroic uses for spider powers in Marvel's Spider-Man. But we're minor story spoilers for the game. There's a pigeon. Ah, oh, come back, little birdie! Spider-Man is committed to protecting and caring for the residents of New York, but surely that doesn't include pigeons, which smell, carry disease, and stole my pretzel at one time. But try telling that to Spidey, who, despite the fact that violent crimes are erupting across town literally every two minutes, Local units, we've got reports of a mugging. isn't afraid to take a detour to chase a flying rodent for his friend Howard, who has lost all his pigeons and somehow thinks this is a problem worth bothering a superhuman man with the proportional strength of a spider with. When they kicked me out of my place, they set all my birds loose. Pidgey's the only one who found me. Spidey can't say no to a person in need, though, no matter how questionable their so-called emergency really is. Mark our words, it doesn't matter how urgent the blinking red crime icon you're swinging towards looks, if you spot the broad greenish circle on the minimap that suggests a lost pigeon is nearby, you will definitely change course and go pigeon hunting. 10.30, robbery in progress, suspect armed. Location is south of Houston. Yeah, gotta get him. What? You can't expect a pigeon to simply home in on its nest by itself. Or, hang on, is that exactly what you can expect a pigeon to do? This obsessive pigeon collecting might be just about forgivable if Spider-Man was rescuing the lost birds with any sort of care, but instead, when he gets close enough, he deploys his web shooters and yanks the poor things out of the air with enough force to stop a truck. Now, we're no experts on pigeon anatomy, but we're pretty sure their fragile, hollow-boned necks aren't up to that kind of rapid deceleration. Okay. Oh well, I guess Howard never said he needed his pigeons back alive. Gotta be specific, dude. I thought web swinging would let me get pizzas delivered fast. And it did. Fast and smashed. The life of a superhero is a life full of quick changes. You need to be able to put on and take off your clothes faster than a magic mic. In Spidey's early days, when he was getting to grips, pun intended, because of the spider grip, with his new powers and quick changes, he left hastily popped up backpacks all over the city, some of which still have clothes in them. Oh, oh man, I meant to wash this gym shirt six years ago. Hey, you. Gross, I'm not picking Spidey for my dodgeball team if he's wearing that, even if spider sense would be an incredible skill for a dodgeball player to have. Actually, you know why he's back on the team. Still, many of them are packed full with not only weird smells, but fond memories from Peter Parker's teen years and beyond. Tried mixing up a prototype web fluid at Oscorp while Harry had his internship there. Didn't work. That place has always been bad luck for me. And it's up to you to whisk him around the city to find them, so the woman who lives in this building can finally stop worrying where that smell is coming from. And the youngsters of New York can stop trashing the city trying to find them themselves. I saw a backpack stuck to a wall with webs. If it's yours, some kids have been throwing rocks at it. What this basically amounts to is tidying your room, if your room was the entirety of New York, and everything you owned was stored in 55 backpacks. And you had no problem hacking into a state crime monitoring system in order to find that wheat cake recipe you squirreled away. Aunt May's recipe for wheat cakes. <laughs> I could never make it work on my own. Man, those have got to be really good wheat cakes. But how come Peter Parker has so many backpacks, we all cried? Maybe he could afford his rent if he wasn't spending all his dollars on shoulder-carried receptacles. Well, it turns out he won the Wilson Fisk Science Award back in 2011, which included the prize of a lifetime supply of backpacks, not realising that their winner wouldn't be too polite to make full use of this. I did accept the lifetime supply of backpacks, though. Guys, Spider-Man is why you have terms and conditions, and also weird smelling backpacks glued to the outside of your building. Now I ask, how many other heroes fight crime and fix your shower? 
One thing that you wouldn't think was high on a superhero's priority list is whether you have a strong enough jet of water in your shower to get the shampoo out all in one quick rinse. But you'd be wrong. When Spidey heads to the Gemini research station, he finds a building with water pressure so bad that it's inconsistent all over, and that needs to be fixed ASAP. Whoa, the pressure in this building's all over the map. I need to find out why. The water towers connect to the city's system at the four-story mark. I'll scan the pipes, try to see where this starts. Truly this is what Uncle Ben meant when he spoke of great responsibility. Now, this is bad on the health of the pipes and the quality of your hair, but it's something that can easily be fixed by a person without superpowers. So, does he alert the building's owners or caretaker before carrying on with his crime-fighting duties? Nope. He rolls up his figurative sleeves, goes in there, and fixes the water pressure himself. Here's the problem. Valve's at the wrong setting. Easy enough to fix. Yeah, um, Spidey could uh, just, you know, Google a plumber. But still, hooray! The water pressure is corrected, and presumably that school bus teetering over a ravine on the other side of town found its own way back from the edge. Seriously, Spidey, you've got superheroing to do. Stop taking business away from hardworking professionals. Pressure shouldn't be that high, unless the drainage is blocked. I'll check the outlet pipe. Besides, we already have a plumbing hero who dresses in red and blue. It's a him, Mario. That's not how it's said. Shh. Great campfire! I've got a scary story! It's about going back to jail! Let's kick it up a notch! Like all the most noble superheroes, Spider-Man doesn't kill people. Or at least, he doesn't leave anyone alive to accuse him of doing so. Because honestly, can we in all conscience say that some of the injuries that Spidey readily inflicts upon New York's criminal element are anything other than totally fatal? <laughs> We're not doctors, but when being kicked in the spine makes that noise, we're pretty sure it's what the medical profession calls game over for your spine and life. And that's the tip of the iceberg when it comes to whiplash-inducing moves that Spider-Man deploys at a whim. The game will barely have started, and you'll be hurling car doors into the teeth of thugs. And hey, maybe that's not fatal, maybe those injuries are simply life-changing. But progress a bit further through the game and look on in terror as Spider-Man takes down his foes by throwing a motorbike at them. Oh my god, they even explode. And exactly how survivable do you think it is to be kicked off a rooftop by a man strong enough to stop a runaway train? Aha, you're doubtless thinking, but those villains simply end up webbed to the side of a building. wriggling in a way that indicates they're clearly still conscious. I mean, that could just be their death spasms, but let's be charitable and say baddies kicked off the edge do clearly survive. Almost all the time. Oh, great, now we have to kill everyone. Empire Sanitation, this is Eddie. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm trying to track down some items that were accidentally picked up from a dumpster outside my apartment. Dumpster number. Uh, uh, hang on. Uh, 64476. The life of a superhero isn't all pigeon hunting and water pressure adjustments. You also get to rummage through garbage. To be honest here, this is because he's looking for his all-important Spidey Drive, which Spider-Man carelessly allowed to be removed from his apartments with all his other possessions, and which contains tons of vital hero information he doesn't want to lose. I don't care if I lose everything else, but I have to find my Spidey Drive. So you can kind of understand why he's chasing after bin men all over the city and sticking his head in the back of garbage trucks. No sign of my stuff. <coughs> What an interesting smell. But the thing is, it's not the first time he's got stuck into this stuff, as shown by some of his creations. Got some good parts from this old cell phone. Wonder what I could accomplish with a real budget, instead of dumpster diving. Any number of crimes could be happening down on the streets while you're up here rushing around trying to save a flash drive that you didn't bother to back up anywhere else. You ever hear of the cloud, Spidey? The web isn't just that goop you fire out of your wrists. In honour of his newfound love for digging around in bins, we'd like to suggest some new alter egos for Peter Parker. Urban Fox Boy? Raccoon Bloke? Ratman? Call us Marvel. Oh 
Who wouldn't want to live in the same city as the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and give him a high five? Top Gun high five! <laughs> nice! Get away from him, you are in danger. See, apart from the occasional hello and the occasional halted bank robbery, <laughs> actually sharing a city with the web-slinger isn't great. For one, he doesn't always check where he's landing and can drop out the sky at any minute, sending you flying. As those from New York say, A, and furthermore, I'm walking here. And that's not even mentioning the more aggressive superhero landings he does, which not only send people flying, but also ruin the ground underneath him. Creating even more of a trip hazard and wasting taxpayer money. And he doesn't even need to land next to you to scare the hell out of you. With him swinging about, even not at top speeds, there's every chance he'll swing right past you at street level and force you to leap ungracefully out the way. Sir, I say again, hey, I'm walking here. And that's not even mentioning if you so much as say you don't like his outfit. That cheap suit ain't fooling anybody which causes Spider-Man to fly into a rage and hurl a manhole cover into the crowd. <laughs> At least it did when I played it. Only I can be mean to Spidey, because we're friends. No, you're not. I can dream. No, you can't. <laughs> All clear to spray. Come on, fishy fishies. This is good for you. The old saying goes that fish is a man's best friend. That's dogs. Dogs? Doubt it. Ew. Well, fish are certainly Spidey's friends, if this particular side mission in Marvel's Spider-Man is anything to go by. It begins with Spider-Man investigating a rooftop Oscorp research station, the kind of facility Spidey has promised to maintain on behalf of his rich best friend Harry Osborn, while Harry's away travelling in Europe and unable or unwilling to do his own job his damn self. Is this a, a salaried position, Harry? Uh, oh, okay. Well, well, call me when you get off the yacht. But Spider-Man soon discovers that the yachting privileges of the Manhattan elite are in terrible peril, because this Oscorp facility is registering sick fish hanging around the harbour. I bet whatever's in those barrels caused the problem. You might think this is Spider-Man's cue to put in a quick call to Namor the Submariner and get back to the business of stopping the rampaging demon crime gang from tearing New York apart at the seams. <laughs> But that's why you're not Spider-Man, because it is actually time to use his powers to web-swing around the Manhattan water's edge, dispensing fish-curing aerosol from hitherto unmentioned secret armpit vents. Pretty sure they didn't mention this in the theme song. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, he can, dispenses gas from armpit vents. New York's fish are on the mend. Oh no, there it is. To be fair, Spidey's doing a good deed here, as this is all to stop the fish suffering and to prevent New York's food supply being contaminated. Time to find a spot to scan my finny friends and make sure they're cured. And hey, at least this is happening safely over the water. It's not like Spider-Man is applying the same technique to sick pigeons in a children's playground. I wonder what Jameson will make of this. Spider-Man spreads chemtrails, seems like a good bet. Uh, Spider-Man, I, I don't think that should go in a pram. I, uh, oh, okay, you're the boss. Glad I'm not Spidey's PR manager, because J. Jonah Jameson is going to have a field day with that one. I'm looking for Isaac Delaney. I think he's on the dance floor. There he is. The lizard in the lab coat. The three main benefits of being Spider-Man are as follows. One, no commuting. Two, stick to ceilings. Three, no need to buy a costume at Halloween. So who can blame Peter Parker for sneaking into this campus Halloween bash dressed as, well, himself? Halloween party. Guess I don't have to change. Which turns out to be the least creative costume he could have put together, because almost everyone had the same idea. Hey, look at us! Spider Bros! Petey's there to track down a scientist called Delaney, which sounds noble enough, but effectively translates to him using his incredible superpowers to hassle a gang of kids who are just trying to cut loose on the spookiest night of the year. Are you Dr. Delaney? Oh, Spider-Man, my nemesis. You won't catch me this time. <coughs> oh no, smoke. Whatever will I do? To start with, Spider-Man's been told Delaney is dressed as one of his, quote, greatest foes. So why he decides to start by interrogating a student dressed as Mysterio, one of the least impressive villains in comic book history, is frankly beyond us. No, I have you! Hey! 
Hey, what's wrong with you? I worked on that helmet for a week. Nice job, hero. You made a cosplayer cry. But that's nothing compared to what happens to this student who's come dressed as Rhino. Some of your nemesis is, we gotta uh, fight. Later. And thinks they can indulge in a little light villain roleplay with one of the very many Spider-Men in attendance. What the hell? The spines! Spidey, you gotta watch out for the spines. Remember the talk we had? No spines in future. Spider-Man, not Spider-Man. It's much worse. Check out my moves! <laughs> so those are some of the slightly less heroic things that Spider-Man can get up to in Marvel's Spider-Man. What ones does your Spider-Man get up to? Because it's totally Spider-Man and not you making him do silly things as well. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Let us know in the comments down below. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And if you want to see more Spider-Man, we've got some more Spider-Man videos right here. We've done loads of them because we know all about Spider-Man, mainly because he's like my best friend. And no, he's not. Yes, he is. Then get me pictures of Spider-Man. Yes, boss.